So my name's Gareth Wynne Jones. I um, farm up here at St. Llewyn in Llanfavechan. My family's been working this land 375 years. So uh, a lot of history. And just behind you here is an ancient Celtic hill fort. And 6,000 years ago, they were digging and working this land and taking axe heads out. So this was the first ever axe factory in the world. So, you know, I'm steeped in history. We're steeped in beautiful landscape. And for me, this is the important part of when I come into it. I believe we need to be reconnecting people with food production, with fishing, shooting, hunting. Um, people are just so far removed about what goes on in the countryside. So as a farmer, we keep sheep, we keep beef, we've got chickens, we've got pigs. We've got something very, very rare on the mountain here, which are the Carnedda mountain ponies. And, um, you know, we're trying to keep a balance, a balance for the environment, you know, a balance for wildlife. And we're trying to be producing sustainable, affordable and seasonal food for people. And these are all big parts or big challenges in our everyday life as farmers. I think the disconnect has happened over the last couple of generations. If you'd have asked somebody 50 years ago if they knew anybody um, from the countryside or had family that were farming, most probably the answer would have been yes. Now, you know, the numbers of farmers are smaller, a lot of mechanical works. You know, when I was a boy, there'd be 10, 15 kids in the village that would come up and help us in the hay, in the shearing, in the gathering of the ponies. You know, they were connected. They'd come up here with the little air rifles, shooting rabbits, shooting squirrels. And that's been lost, I believe, you know, that we need, we need to reconnect people. Well, I believe I keep a good, good balance up here, you know, by keeping the numbers of crows down, keeping the numbers of magpies down, keeping the numbers of squirrels. We've got a lot of songbirds here. You know, we've got some very, very rare birds, which are called the chuff. And these, these are a, um, a part of the, you know, the crow family. And they nest over here on the quarry. And every morning when I'm sitting here having a coffee, I hear them flying over onto Garag Vaur, where they feed there. And they feed there for a reason. We have the Carnedai ponies, which are very, very rare, 220 breeding mares left in the world. They're not given any kind of wormers or any antibiotics, so everything's organic. So when they're grazing, they're pooping, and when they poop, it attracts the invertebrate and the insects. And that's why the chuff are thriving up here on the Carnedai mountains. And that's really important, you know, that we can get that balance 2006, we set up the first um, grazing PLC in the UK. It's called Yabber and Llamavechan. And we sourced money out of Europe and um, from Welsh government and different sources. And we used that money to take the sheep off the mountain. But as well, we used that money because we believed that it was an overpopulation of foxes and we could see, you know, the, the wild grouse and a lot of the ground nesting birds in the mountains struggling. So we hired a couple of people to come in and take that opportunity, and which we pay them to take out some of the foxes. And in the last four or five years, I can tell you, when we're going up there gathering now, I'm seeing big bursts of wild grouse, you know, coming up in front of me, in front of the quad, in front of the dogs, in front of the sheep, as we go. And it's lovely to see. And I'm still seeing the mountain foxes up there. So it's the balance. It's keeping that equilibrium. It's really important, you know? People need to understand. We don't have a lot of hedgehogs in this area now. We don't have a lot of ground nesting birds because there is an overpopulation of badgers. And this is why we're in this situation is because government bought a policy in to protect these animals. We're killing thousands of cows a year because nobody has got the guts, the balls to go out there and say, we need a cull. We need to take these numbers out. And the scientific information is there, evidence. 
to say that if we do take their numbers out, and look, I don't want to see the end of the badger, I don't want to see the end of the fox, but you put any wild animal in a situation where there's overpopulation and you get problems. You get problems for other creatures. As humans, we are the top of the food chain. We are the apex predator, and it's our responsibility to take these decisions. So government and policymakers should be really listening to the people that work the land, you know, that are growing the food, that are producing the stuff that's been put on your plate, and watching after the environment. If you came up to the Carnedai Mountains, I can show you some of the rarest flora and fauna some great habitats, mosaics of beautiful habitats. And they're up there because my forefathers worked this land in a sustainable and environmentally friendly way. The bird life, the wildlife, you know, everything thrives up there because the balance is right. You take people away from that and you will have a mess. And I promise you, I promise you, without the farmers and the knowledge, we'll have nothing up there. And that's really important going forward is to bring people involved, reconnect that bridge back into cities, back into towns, so they understand the importance of farmers, gamekeepers and country landowners that do the job properly. Yeah, don't get me wrong, there is people out there that are doing the wrong thing, breaking the law, which they shouldn't be doing. But sometimes we have to have the voice of reason and we have to open this conversation and we have to take this to London, to Westminster, to the Welsh Assembly and we have to have the people that have been voted in by the general public listening. Because as a countryman, I know we're a small voice and not many crosses go into them boxes for them to be voted. But let me tell you, that small voice is feeding the nation and unless something changes, we will have trouble. The average age of a farmer now is 65. It could be even older. And for me looking around now, I can see, you know, the country folk are not coming through as you'd expect. The youngsters are not getting involved. And if we don't have new blood and youngsters, we are gonna lose what we've got in this great British countryside. I think we're turning a corner. I think things are changing. The tide is turning towards farming, towards, you know, environmentally friendly food production as well. And cheap food comes at a cost. Cheap food will come at a cost to the animal, it'll come at a cost to the farmer, it will come at a cost to the soil. And the soil is the most important thing we've got and we need ruminants within that ecosystem. But we need nature, you know, we keep bees up here, we need that wildlife, we need them pollinators. It's a balance. But when I listen to some of these, you know, so-called environmental journalists saying that they want to rewild this and that, yeah, fine, as they sit down in London drinking their oatmeal lattes and, and telling people how to live, I, I really, really get frustrated with it because I live off the land every single day. I know what it takes to put food on my table. I know what dies for me to be fed and for other peoples to be fed. And, you know, when they talk about the vegan lifestyle and nothing dies, well, do you know what? I've got a small vegetable plot here and there's more lives lost in that small vegetable plot than the whole of the other farm. And that's, that's just being honest, you know? Insects, worms, slugs, snails, whatever it is, you know, squirrels, rabbits, pigeons, everything has a cost when we're producing food. So how do we address that? We reconnect, and I think we're lucky we have social media. It can be a double-edged sword, but we have social media where we can hopefully educate people and hopefully, you know, engage with them. Because everybody has a choice to eat what they want. But being misled with a propaganda to think that nothing dies for their diet is totally untrue. And that's what we need to do. We need to address that and we need to educate people and give them an educated choice. Because whatever your diet is, pescatarian, vegetarian, flexitarian, vegan, carnivore, all these different diets, something will die for us to eat. And that's a fact. As a farmer, I can tell you that, honestly. 
But going back to the rewilding, and you know, people are talking about planting trees. We've had a really dry summer this year, and I know a lot of the trees that they planted have failed. I've planted 40 trees up the, here this year. So I don't, I'm not against tree planting, but the right tree in the right place, hedges and yet edges. If you look around me, this place is surrounded by trees. I love them. You know, they're an important part of our ecosystems. But as well, we need the grass. You know, we need these different habitats. The Carnedi Mountains storing more carbon than any forestry in the UK. You know, it's peat mounds up there, which are massive stores. We never hear about it. And the sheep and the ponies and the cattle, they're grazing this land in a sustainable way. And we think about it and we make this, you know, a little bit less scientific, but every time a sheep or a cow or, or a pony up on that mountain is grazing that grass, that grass then regrows and it sequences more carbon back into the soil. So it's doing a good job. So by, you know, eating the lamb and the beef, it's not destroying the planet. We are putting something back into the whole ecosystem. And that's what we should be talking about. Yeah, there is overeating, there is obesity, but if you take what some of these rewilders want and be producing this protein in factories with chemical-based, whatever it is, fungal, you know, it's absolutely ludicrous. We've seen we've got an obesity problem in this country. We've got a diabetes problem in this country. We've got people that are sick because of what they're eating. Let's address that. Let's get people eating healthily, seasonal food. That's a massive, massive bonus to anything. Locally produced food. Regenerative agriculture, food that's been produced in a sustainable and environmentally friendly way. Everybody has that educated choice. Yes, food has been too cheap and food is gonna be a lot more expensive in the future, but you're gonna to have to have a farmer three times every single day in your life. You go see a doctor maybe once a month, maybe once a year, a dentist the same, your accountant, your solicitor, but you're gonna need that farmer three times a day, every single day. Never forget that. We're an important part of the whole system of life. So let's address it. Let's get people backing British agriculture, uh, agriculture, eating British food. We need a farming food revolution in this country. And we need to be growing more of our own food. We need to be producing more of our own energy. We need to be more self-sufficient going forward and not dependent on other countries that can hold the gun to our heads. Let's do this as a country, working together, supporting British agriculture, supporting British business, and um, I'd love to see it. You know, I'm 55 and I'm starting to think, you know, there is, times are changing and people are starting to look where their food's coming from. People are starting to ask questions. I think we have to look at some of the things that we do as well as an industry, you know, the, the wastefulness of some, of some parts of us. Um, for me, I'm on a little driven shoot. There's a few people on it and we go, we'll shoot about 80 to 90 birds on our drives and every single bird will be taken home. And that's what I do, you know, every time I go, I'll take six, eight brace home. I'll either breast them or pluck them and freeze them and I'm still eating them now. You know, it's really good meat, it's really healthy meat. So I, I think, you know, some of the big, big shoots maybe should be giving some of these pheasants and partridge into food banks, you know, instead of um, putting them in holes. We, should, we shouldn't be wasting any food. We should be recycling it, giving it to people, engaging with people. So we can learn so much and engage with others by bringing them on board. I've had vegans up here, you know, on the farm, and I've debated with them, I've spoken with them, and, and it's been nice. You know, when you see somebody face to face, people aren't so aggressive, they aren't so nasty, and you can have a conversation. And I think that's important, that we have them conversations going forward. If we give up the fight, that's up to us. But I believe we are winning, and that things are changing, because people are scared, 
food prices, energy hikes, we're going to need affordable food. And we're going to have to make sure that affordable food is not damaging the environment. So working to do that is very, very important. And bringing schools and engaging the young and the next generation with the countryside, with farming and with food production has to be the answer. Let them make an educated choice of what they want to eat themselves. Let's not force it on them with misleading propaganda, especially from big multinational companies. We see it with a lot of this fake foods, how they're making fe people feel guilty about, oh, the animal dies, nothing dies for you to eat here. You know, that's the thing that we need to address. Something will be dying every time we're eating. That's the fact. It's been a tough few years for us as well. You know, we've had death threats. We've had, you know, the, the messages I get on a weekly basis are horrible. But what do we do? Do we stick ourselves back in that sandpit and, and not fight for what's right? We're, we're never going to be agreeing with everybody on everything. But if we're honest to ourselves, you know, and I'd rather be honest to myself, and I know there's fantastic, fantastic farmers out there, gamekeepers, country folk, they're doing great work, but the voice is not being heard. What you do hear a lot is an echo chamber from a small minority, and that can be difficult. And I think mainstream media hasn't helped. Mainstream media has given a platform for quite a few people that have been absolutely horrible towards farmers, towards people in the countryside. But they're eating three times a day as well. You know, they'll, they'll be putting food in their bellies. So we, we have to address that. And I think the more vocal we are as an industry and the more youngsters coming through now is good. You know, we're hearing a lot more youngsters coming through with a voice and we need them. We need them on TikTok, we need them on Snapchat, we need them on Twitter, we need them on Facebook, we need them on Instagram. All these social media platforms are a stage for us to share our stories and to engage with the general public. Let's not forget 84.4% of the UK's population live in cities. You know, they've lost contact. But there's a lot of people out there that support us as well, that are very quiet. If you're not optimistic and positive, um, yeah, I think you'd get up every morning and start crying. My uh, hashtag is living the dream. I live in a beautiful area. My family's worked this land for hundreds of years. I know it's right. And I know we need to pass that on to the next generation. I'd hate to think that I would be the last generation to be farming here, but I know my children are keen. And if we can get the support of the general public behind us, we can build a better Britain on our bellies and have that farming food revolution to make sure that we watch after this beautiful countryside and we can produce a sustainable, healthy food system within the UK. So get out there, farmers, countrymen, gamekeepers, whatever you are, share your story, engage with people. Yeah, everybody's never going to you know, agree with us, but let's be honest with people. Let's not sit on fences. Let's, let's not be politicians. Let's just tell them the truth and move forward in a positive way to have a better Britain.